Yo, yo, what's up? Um, my apologies if it feels like I'm moving like extra smooth right now. Um, I'm at like 60 frames because we have been streaming Ghost of Tsushima uh, on the channel. Like right after this video uploads, while you're seeing it, probably I will be live. Um, I will be live going through the weekend playing this game. We'll play it, play it, play it in its entirety, maybe to 100. percent We don't know. Um, we'll see. But um, I appreciate you guys has been here showing some love. I took a break. Um, ate, took a little nap, now I'm back at it. Um, and um, I wanted to do this video, however, before I went to live. Now, look, I did a video talking about Fox 35, and I want to give a big shout out to those guys because it seems like they're the one of the few local um, journalists, um, local local guys that are actually doing some sort of you know legitimate forms of journalism. Because there's been a lot of things up for question when it comes to COVID 19 um, and the death count the case count, really all of it. Um, it's really up for dispute. It absolutely is up for dispute. It's up for debate. We've heard conflicting things. We've heard confirmations, not just here in Aranda, but also around the world where things are being included in cases that aren't necessarily confirmed, people that have tested positive for COVID-19. So we've talked about cooking the books, why they would want to do that, who knows, right? We know that there are people that get extra money. You get extra money depending on where you're at. Um, you get extra money, like in the U.S. case, those hospitals, um, in the event they count things, the, these things towards deaths um, and hospitalizations and what have you. And it's a really, it's a thing that we have to discuss. I don't care where you're at on the side of COVID-19, I would actually argue if you are one of those that thinks this is something that we should, despite it having a 99%, over 99% survival rate, if you talk about the infected fatality rate, not the case fatality rate, but the infected fatality rate, you're talking about over 99%. And if you think that this is something that we still should be doing lockdowns or all kinds of having these really, really tough draconian laws that are putting people's livelihoods at stake. If you feel like that's the case, you should still want accurate numbers. I would especially argue that you will want accurate numbers because accurate numbers give you perspective, period. They give you perspective. If you if you can trust these numbers, then you can actually, if you are to build a policy around it, and this is what makes it so dangerous, is that people are building these dangerous like laws, these very dangerous things, set it around inaccurate numbers. So this may be why these leaders cannot actually give you a detailed, and this includes the science community, doctors and so, so forth. When we talk about lockdowns, nobody seems to know how long. What are we actually are looking for? Just, oh, well, we got to slow the spread. And it's like, to what? What is the proper amount of spread? What's the proper amount of death? And maybe that's why they can't answer because we got crazy crap like this happening. Fox 35 investigates. Reporter asks Orange County, Florida health officials if the two COVID deaths listed in their 20s had any underlying conditions, which is something that is important that a lot of people want to understand, right? Um, was the, the, you know, you saw two younger people that ended up passing from this. What did they have some underlying conditions? Did they have some, some serious diseases? What have you? It's an important thing to document. This fool answered, the first one didn't have any. He died in a motorcycle accident. So the motherfucker. So the dude got included in the case count for death. And it, he got in a, in a car accident. I mean, a, a motorcycle accident. He was added in the case account, but he died in a motorcycle accident. I have the link uh, in the description if you want to check some of this out. But if these guys, and this is what, what gets me, right? If Fox 35, because we, we talked about the other Florida, well, the other Florida video that I discussed, we kind of went into detail about this as well. 
And Florida had did that that you know a breakdown of different like positive rates. And in those positive rates, there was some extremely high positive rates coming out of these labs, like 100%, meaning that every person they tested, every single person that they tested, tested positive. We know that's completely unrealistic, right? We know that there's no way that that's actually the case. But they, that's what they're reporting. And that, of course, is going to impact the, the overall positivity rate when people talk about, well, it's spreading and, and all of this. Now, look, there's a debate to be had if it, whether you want it to spread, whether you don't want it to spread. Um, some people would argue get it out the way, herd immunity. Some would uh, argue that nobody ever should get it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And in, in, in this case, when you talk about the COVID-19 deaths, we know that in numbers that were recently reported, at least one had a, was a damn motorcycle accident. And we it's funny because people online would joke like, Oh, this person died, got shot. I bet they were included in any in COVID-19 deaths. And it's a joke, but it's not a joke anymore because this is what's actually happening. Now, again, I cannot stress enough. What if Fox 35 didn't investigate? And if journalists all around the country were actually journalists, that's exactly what they would be would be doing, especially the big ones. Looking into more detail with these numbers, not accepting them just for what they are. Okay, well, it's, this is the case count. This is how much, this is how much, uh, how many people had it. This is how many people died from it. And we just accept it. If we had actually, definitely as all of this came up for question, we would have way more people in all across the nation actually investigating, doing their damn job as journalists, asking questions and being like, look, what the, give us some more details. Cause this, this, this is, we want accurate numbers. We want accurate numbers. And maybe you maybe you uncover that, okay, well, these are legitimate. Or maybe you stumble across the fact that a guy that died in a damn motorcycle accident died, was included, was included in the COVID-19 deaths. Look, I cannot stress enough. We have no idea what the numbers are. And it sucks because... This has been going on for a minute. When you're talking about four, five months or what have you. This has been going on for a little bit. And the reality is we don't know what the numbers are as far as what's accurate. We don't know how accurate the numbers even are. We know that people die from it. And I'm not. Look, I cannot. I'm not going to sit up here and say that this is a hoax because I, I don't believe that. I believe the virus is a real thing. Um, I know someone that had it. However, they are cooking books. Numbers are being inflated. And because they are being inflated, we don't really know. We don't know what the, what the numbers are, how accurate these numbers are. And I hope that people around the country, as far as these, uh, more investigative journalists went out there to actually seek the truth and get confirmation so we can have perspective. And this is exactly what I mentioned in the last video. Crash victim. It's, it's insane. A person who died in a motorcycle accident was added in Florida's COVID-19 death count, according to a state health official. It just, it's bizarre. He died in a motorcycle accident and was included in the COVID-19 the death count in Florida that's not that's not right man <laughs> we have to have a discussion about this don't know so I don't think so uh, I have to double check uh, the opinion asked if the man's data was removed. I think so. Uh, we were arguing, discussing, uh, not because the numbers is 100. Uh, it doesn't make any sense if it's 99, but the fact that the individual didn't die from COVID-19 died in a crash, which you could actually argue that could have been, <laughs> that could have been a COVID-19 that caused him to crash. Okay, I, I, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, come on. Look, this is the the reality of the situation. 
there are lots and lots of numbers that have been pumped, inflated, and we don't really understand the capacity as um, uh, death. We don't. We don't. And that's on at nobody's fault else's fault other than people that are um, responsible for reporting. The state health officials, um, labs, whatever. It, it's, you know, it's hospitals. It's on them. And unfortunately, we're never going to know the truth to what capacity, how dangerous this damn thing is. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be that dangerous. Um, it was as infectious as as a lot of people claimed. Um, then, yeah, it, we, we we know if it was if it was like so dangerous um, as if you got it, you were guaranteed to die. But we know at least that's not the truth. But how many of the deaths are legitimate deaths is a question that I'm going to be asking. I think we're going to be asking for a long time. We know people are dying from it, but how many of those that are included in this death count actually died from COVID-19? We know that even in the cases, we've talked about this. I have another video coming up where hospitals are having to change up numbers because they got caught adding probable cases, meaning people they never, ever friggin' tested, man. In the, in the counts, just, oh, well, this person was around these these groups of people. It was like 60 people at the office. We're going to assume they all got them. Like, what is that, man? That's not honest. That's not, that's intellectually lazy. You could be, I know there's a lot of people mad at me and mad at my coverage over this because, yes, I, of course, think the reaction is an overreaction and no, it was never worth putting all of these people's livelihoods at risk. What should have happened is, and I, I was talking about this long back in March, if there was ever going to be a quarantine effort, it should have been for the absolutely sick and the people that were most vulnerable. Those should have been the people that should have been isolated. Everybody else, every last one of us that wanted to take a risk, that's something that we should have been free to take. The fact that they were, everybody was treated like it was a one size fits all, everybody is the same in health status, even though we know for a fact this virus does not impact the old folk the same way that it do healthy folk and young folk. It, but here we are. Lockdowns are being increased in a lot of places, man. And it's unbelievable. 